you all can't find seats, you can stand on the sides if anybody can't find a seat. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little difficult. All right, Matt. So, all right, guys, I'm sorry. First, I got to open my phone. <laughs> Matt, you uh, are the uh, Senior Vice President of Creators for Mighty Networks. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to have Matt explain everything that Mighty Networks does. Um, but uh, before we get started, Matt, I just want you to really quickly take us through your past. You've been at this convention many years before. You've done a lot with YouTube. Just quickly walk us through it. Yeah, I'm an OG YouTube creator. I started way back 2008, ran my channel until 2012 when I was hired by YouTube. I was in their very first Next Up program, and that's when I met Google employees for the first time. Really hit it off and uh, uh, became a content strategist at YouTube and across several different roles. Um, ending with the uh, creator liaison role mm -hmm. across 10 years, and that's the short version. Right, absolutely. Uh, just real quick, when you became, when you were a creator and moving to YouTube, any, like, anything that you were like, really surprised about that, like a misconception you had as a creator about YouTube or anything of that nature? Yeah, I really felt like I was pulled up out of the ocean and onto a cruise ship. <laughs> Because if you've ever heard the perks of being a Google employee, you know, there's like free breakfast and catered lunch, mm -hmm. and there are massage chairs, and they really care about your well-being. So in a way, I thought, oh gosh, I'm, I'm quitting being a creator, I'm going to be a corporate employee now, but the, it was lovely uh, working there. So that was one reaction I had. Amazing. And now, let's talk about where you are currently, Mighty Networks. So just... <coughs> Blank slate, what is Mighty Networks? Yeah, Mighty Networks is a platform where you can build your own online community and charge access to it. Mm -hmm. And you can also, within that community, sell online courses and access to subgroups within the community. And the average uh, price that creators charge their members inside of Mighty Networks is uh, $40 per month per member. So it ends up being a, a really nice um, revenue layer on top of your social media audience. Yeah, something a little more consistent than maybe just being on a social platform. Yeah. Um, so what is the right kind of creator? What is the perfect kind of creator for Mighty Networks? The type of creator we see succeeding most in their Mighty Network is someone who is a teacher, um, a, a coach, a guru, somebody who's trying to improve the lives of their members in some way, mm -hmm. um, less so the entertainers out there. You really want a, what we call a big purpose for your community um, to bring people in and, and have a reason for, for it being there. If there's no big purpose, if there's no point to the community, it tends to fizzle over time. So, so we, we think of a, a platform like uh, Mighty Networks as being a little bit different than your typical social community. Talk to me how this is different, like a community can be different than uh, a social platform. Yeah, I think the word community is one of the most um, abused words out there <laughs> and thrown out. And at this conference, you know, many platforms talk about their creators community, but but they really mean fan base right. or audience. Right. And that is a revelation that I came to in the last year. I, I also, at YouTube, I would talk about creators' communities. But a community is not a group of people who just consume content passively. A community is a group of people who interact with each other and meet each other. And so when you think about your community as a creator, it's not really a community unless you're bringing them together in some way and letting them interact. Absolutely. But Matt, I do want to point out, like, creators are suffering. We talk about this a lot now. Mental health, burnout. Um, does this sound like it could be more work? Or how, how is this different? It's not the same amount of work. It's probably three or four hours per week. Okay. And the difference is you are not putting content out there um, this is not like a bonus content platform. You are the host of a party in your Mighty Network. And so 
just like a great party, once you get it going, it kind of runs itself. And so you, you make posts, um, you, you, you post polls, articles, you help foster the conversation. Beyond that, your community starts posting and helping each other. And it's a really nice phenomenon that happens when, when all these people are, are uh, building the, t the community together and working on it. Yeah, and I, I feel like you're probably one of the most apt people to be in this position because you're a former creator yourself. You know what these creators go through. Yes. Can you just, you know, for those who may not know, just give us your background as a creator. Walk us through why did you join YouTube? What sparked you to do it? And what was the content you were making as a creator? Sure, I mean, real fast going way back, um, film school guy, went out to LA to pursue screenwriting and Hollywood directing, movie directing and all that. <laughs> um, moderate success, but very frustrated by all the walls and the gatekeepers of Hollywood. Uh, 2008, saw YouTube, I saw all these kids getting tons and tons of views and I'm like, what are they doing to do this? <laughs> so I kind of analyzed it back then. Uh, put on some wigs, uh, played a family of four called the Fooplers, <laughs> and it took off. Um, and just had a, a blast running my channel as uh, a way to creatively vent. I didn't do it right. I, I did all kinds of stuff. I was making the channel, the videos, for me. It wasn't for an audience. And so I didn't follow many best practices. I wasn't consistent. I just made what I felt like. But it still did pretty well and um, set up my career doing this. Is it crazy to you? Like my colleagues will, are like today quoting your videos at me. Like, is it weird all these years later to still sort of have that fame from, from when you first started out as a content creator? It is surprising because I'm like, surely nobody remembers <laughs> that video I made in 2009. But they sometimes do. I'll get a tweet about like, hey, remember that? Right, like, right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm sure people also will be discovering you for the first time, you know, too, and tweeting at you, which I, it's gotta be a very cool feeling. Yeah. Um, but I think your journey is really unique in that you went from content creator to YouTube liaison, um, which is not something that everybody does. Um, tell me, like, why might a creator, like, need someone that liaises with the platform? Oh, gosh. It is definitely necessary. Um, the experience of a creator is so different from the experience of an employee on any platform. Um, and... You know, at YouTube, for 10 years, I was very vocal internally about we need more employees running their own channels and trying to experience what it's like, um, all the challenges involved, and, and not just uploading one video every three months, but actually trying to build a fan base and being consistent about it. Um, the challenge is it, that's an incredible endeavor and could be a full-time job, but we, you know, YouTube employees obviously need to run the platform and we want them running the platform. Um, but there is a disconnect between some of these platforms, uh, between the platform employees and the creators and what they experience. And so any platform, TikTok, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, there needs to be somebody in between helping to foster communication. And I believe YouTube is going to hire a new liaison soon, I'm, I'm hoping, because I did a lot of work, yeah, and we need it. It seems like a lot of work for one person when you have like a gajillion creators on a platform. Yeah. Um, I'm curious in your opinion if like this is something you see platforms across the board needing to invest in more. Do you see like, TikTok, like, do you wish that they had like a thousand liaisons to talk to like, a, you know, a million creators or talk to me a little bit about that? Well, the nuance is um, I was not a support person. Like I was not supposed to provide support. Mm -hmm. And that's what Team YouTube is there right. for. Um, my role was to try to understand the grievances and challenges of creators and communicate that in a very vocal way inside YouTube. And to their credit, I mean, they gave me a big mouthpiece internally. I could knock on any door and, um, you know, uh, they would listen. Right. Uh, or hear me out, at right. least. But to your point, I think there needs to be more than one liaison for, you know, uh, 20 million creators right. globally. Right. And so that's why I'm hoping that they're going to continue that, uh, that role. 
Yeah, um, I, I also, I, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about um, the creator career, just being a creator as your job. Um, I know these people are not in this room, but there are people who don't think of creators as a legitimate um, career path, but it is, we know that it is. Um, creators need to have a presence on existing platforms, um, but what is your advice for creators who feel like they might be renting a space on a platform rather than owning their space? I think creators just need to understand that they are operating a business on top of another business that is the platform business and so if the platform ever needs to make a change to their business in some way and your business is sitting on top of that business you know you will feel it under your feet and in my career there um, I certainly heard from many creators who were demonetized because there was some sort of policy change and it, it's hard, it was very hard to hear. Some would say, you know, I've, um, I, I was making a full-time living doing this and all of a sudden it's all wiped out. What am I supposed to do? So I, I just want creators to be realistic about their situation and relationship with the platforms. A lot of creators seem to feel like they have ownership over their channel, but they're sort of like renting the land on the platform. Right. And I just want creators to be um, aware of that. Yeah, I think that's very, very smart and very prescient advice. Um, we've talked about your past as a creator. We've talked about your career at YouTube. Um, so now you're at Mighty Networks. Um, I want you to tell me who are the creators that we should be looking out for who have embraced Mighty Networks. Christy Code Red, um, health coach. She's fantastic on YouTube. She's got a, a huge community on Mighty. Drew, um, Drew Binsky is a travel vlogger, three million subscribers on YouTube, ton on TikTok, Instagram as well. He just started a, a community for travel vloggers uh, or, or people who love to travel to sort of connect with each other. Um, Martinez Evans is a creator who started a, um, a community called S the Slow AF Run Club <laughs> for uh, runners of marathons who don't care about winning, they just wanna hang in the back and finish the race me <laughs> and, and 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 so there's a lot of exciting uh, communities being built that's fabulous and what's the what's the feedback you're getting I assume everyone is like super stoked on this it is and it's a, just a different way of thinking when creators realize that they can just bring people together they don't have to run on this treadmill of making content forever which I don't think humans were built for that they can actually kind of leverage their um, fame in being the host of a community or like the host of a party and just bringing people together. And once they do that and they realize they can kind of step back and watch it run itself, it's to see them light up and realize that and everyone's paying, you know, $40 a month or something. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it seems like you're giving them a little bit more of the bedrock that we were talking about earlier. Um, for them to sort of have and grow and sustain a community than just building it solely on a social platform. You've helped them to diversify in a way, is that correct? That's right, that's right. And on a mighty network, you know, you own your audience. It's your platform, basically. And so no algorithms, no ads, no trolls, usually. Um, w women love mighty networks to the point that uh, the head of marketing was like, Matt, how can we get more men on the platform? And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, That's really? What you never hear. You don't hear that. Yeah. Uh, women especially love it because it is such a safe environment and they don't hear the criticism that they often hear on public platforms. Yeah. So it's a community first platform, but you'd say you do sell courses on there as well. So um, what is the, like, why would one want a community with courses and, and teachable moments like that? Yeah, good question. I mean, anybody who's ever sold a course knows that their students are basically taking it in isolation, and the students often have questions about the course, and course creators will, will do things like, they'll build a course on Teachable, and then they'll start a Facebook group, and hey, if you have any questions, come over here to the Facebook group. You got Facebook ads, you got Facebook al Facebook's algorithm, you got politics, a lot of distractions on Facebook. So right. the idea is if you want to 
launch a course with a community, which students often want anyway, mm -hmm. it's a great place to do that right in the Mighty Network. Amazing. Um, so I, I'm thinking about this sort of like a circle where it's like, okay, you're a creator, you've built your community on a platform. You go to Mighty Networks and you've built your platform on Mighty Networks. How do you then reintegrate this community that you've built that's thriving on Mighty Networks back into some of these existing social media platforms where you are gonna be building some of your content? I mean, they, they kind of live and, and help each other. You've got your huge social media following, you're on these public platforms, uh, these big exposure machines, and, and they're basically you know, marketing levers for you, and then you're funneling a percentage of that audience who really loves what you do into this mighty network, they're paying to be there. And the, the other thing I've really come to realize is that um, people pay attention to what they pay for. So if you, if you pay for a newsletter out there, let's say you pay for one newsletter, but you get 10 of them. Um, you, when you look at your email and all the newsletters come in, you're gonna, you're gonna click on the one you pay for. And we see a lot of engagement when people pay for their community. Right. Creators just need to understand that they can charge and, and substantially. Do you, do you think there's any like anxiety being like, all right, I'm free on TikTok. Is anyone going to follow me? Like, will, will people love me enough to follow me and pay for me? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I felt that way too. As creative people and artists were like, oh gosh, I, I can't charge for this. <laughs> right. And then should I charge like $2 a month? Mm -hmm. Would that be, is that too much? You know, you can, and uh, I, I just always want to encourage creators to, to, to do it. They've got such a warm audience who's willing to pay for more of, of what they do, and, and um, some sort of exclusive community is a great way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to like re-emphasize, I think we see, um, we see a lot of people like, I was thinking of like how Bella Porch, who's like one of the biggest TikTokers, you know, recently got into music and not everyone can really do that. Not everyone's gonna be able to do music. Yeah. But, you know, I think about this idea of like owning, not renting, um, because because you don't know when the algorithm's gonna change. You, you don't have control of the algorithm that exists. Um, you know, you don't know if in 10, 15 years, a platform that exists now won't exist anymore. Um, it's this is about like giving the control back to the creators, right? Mighty Networks is, is about empowering um, these creators and giving them, them some successful entrepreneurship, correct? That's right. Yeah, I, I always encourage any entertainer on YouTube or TikTok to realize that fame is fleeting. And um, over time, the, if you think about the, all the actors that you used to watch, your favorite actor from 10 years ago or your favorite band as a teenager, they're likely not around anymore. Yeah. And sadly, that, that will probably happen to you as a social media star one day. And so the sooner an entertainer can sort of create a product of some kind, a community or a course, the better. Yeah. And so this whole time, Matt, we've been talking about your past. We talked about Mighty Networks. Um, but it's also, this is also kind of cyclical in that you've started to become a creator again. Uh, you've recently started a new channel uh, on YouTube. Can you tell us about it? Tell us what kind of content we can expect from that channel. Creator Dynamics is the name of the channel. And I just wanted a place that I could communicate some of the, I, the thoughts and ideas and um, things I've always wanted to say about being a creator. I was given a lot of um, free range as the creator liaison at YouTube, um, and I don't know that I was ever told, no, you can't say that, but I was sort of censoring myself, like, oh, that wouldn't be appropriate for me to say because then I'm an, I'm an employee. Um, but I, I really wanted to just like keep it real and talk about a lot of these challenges, and, and the crux of the channel is longer creator careers because mm -hmm. in my long history with YouTube since 2008. I've seen these ups and downs and people, you know, I've been to 11 VidCons and the, the people who were here five years ago um, I, aren't really even here now. Right. And, and that concerns me and I, I want to talk about some of those things. Yeah, and... Um, hey, hey. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, 
you know, we've we've talked about like a couple concepts about like you know constantly changing platforms and reasons why um, some creators may fizzle out or may fade away. But for creators in the audience or creators watching who um, you know want to sustain that longevity and want to you know not just go for five years but want to work for forty years as a creator, um, any quick advice that you have off the top of your head for those kinds of creators who like want to go the distance? Yes, um, certainly work to always reinvent yourself. You know, Tim, Tim Schmoyer and I were talking about Madonna earlier on that <laughs> very topic, but also take advantage of the fact that these platforms are competing against each other. Mm -hmm. When you got YouTube competing against TikTok, competing against uh, Instagram and all, um, you know, jump on shorts, experiment. Right. And at the same time, of course, like I said, try to build some sort of monetizing mechanism, basically sell something on the side mm -hmm. of significant value. Um, don't just try to live off basically the tip jar like revenue of the platforms. Right. Um, because unless you're pulling millions and millions of views, it's not a lot of money, you know, yeah. until you like really reach that high level. And have the confidence to, to ask people to pay for what you make yes. and not sell it for yes, free. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, Matt, my, my final question of the night. For the people watching, the people in the audience, want to learn more about Mighty Networks, where can they go? How do they learn more? MightyNetworks.com, of course, is going to be where you can see the, the pricing plans and all that. Um, I should say it's a SaaS platform, so you pay monthly, but then all your transactions, Mighty only takes 2% of the transaction, so for credit card fees. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you want to see a community in action, you can go to community.mightynetworks.com. And that's the, uh, the, the community of Mighty Networks where they teach people how to start and, and build this thriving place for your, your, um, your members. Matt, this has been such a great conversation with just for myself yeah. and for the creators watching. And I just want to thank you for, for speaking with me and for being at your 11th VidCon. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.